you can stand up. Next, okay, let's see if there is somebody. Okay, Farid Ahmed, is he there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Farid. You can start your story. Okay, sir. So, sir, God gifted me a talent that was considered something quite unusual and quite bizarre for my age. This was my literary talent. I used to use smart words and my fondness for books was considered something really unusual for people, for kids my age. So, I used to read books, long, long novels by Rudyard Kipling, which were something that were discarded by boys my age. All they knew were just cartoons and ch channels like this. But my fondness for books gradually made me venture into the world of writing. My mother used to encourage me so much. I used to write many poems and stories. Even unknown to me, I used to use so much smart words. Farid, uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, are you narrating the story you submitted to a SEM writing competition or a different one? Yes, sir. I will start the story. Too. Yes, sir. I will start the story. Oh, okay, fine, fine. Yeah, continue, so, continue. So, my mother used to encourage me so much because I had something that was not good for an author. I had laziness that made me sound boastful of my talent. So, my mother used to Encourage me. And now I will start my story, sir. This story is based on the Samburu tribe in Kenya. I saw them in the Na National Geographic Channel, NGC. I was so filled in awe with their life. They were living amongst lions, giraffes, all those incredible wildlife, fantastic wildlife. And they were living in harmony with them. They had no problems. This worry tribe, I saw their lifestyle and I was so much filled in awe about their lifestyle. So I decided that I would write a story about them. So I used to narrate their culture. There were three youngsters. There were three youngsters called Taku, Taka Kusho and Taka Kusho and Senya. So what they wanted to do most was they wanted to venture into the other worlds. They were inspired by many great heroes like Kofi Annan and Nelson Mandela. They wanted to graduate in the University of Congo. So what they decided was that they would immigrate to the University of Congo. They asked the blessings of the parents and the tribe. The parents readily told them that they accepted to their fondness for traveling because they knew that they would someday make them proud. They traveled and traveled. The only thing that made them go on was the thought of being educated and doing so much things. Their ability to change the world would become true. They traded on many animals. They did business. They, they worked hard. And finally, they got an they got enough money to have an entrance exam into the University of Congo. And because they studied hard, they worked like they have never worked before. They studied and studied. They spent every precious hour, every precious second studying. And they finally, fortunately, passed the entrance exam.
Then they learned many issues. They promised that they would finally make, become. They would finally become powerful figures, and they would change the world. They would live up to their dreams, and they decided that they would reach their village. They would reach the Kenya Wildlife Reserve and see their family once again. But when they reached there, their forest, which was lofty and was filled with wonder, suddenly became barren. There were no trees. There was a massive drought there. Many wildlife had disappeared. There were carcasses of animals here and there. Then, when they got to know that hunters, game hunters, poachers had come there and killed wildlife, they had cleared the trees to make roads and building structures. They decided that they would fight against this. They gathered the tribe and they spoke about these issues. They told that they should not take this not so seriously because the tribe thought that they had their cattle and they could live on them because their cattle were more immune. They could live in such barren landscape. But they told them and the and the cattle. And the cattle were not immune. Soon they would die out. So these three youngsters, this trio, gathered the whole village, the whole tribe, and they made a squad that would guard the forest, guard the place that they were living in. They also wrote to the World Wildlife Agency. World Wildlife Organization to put a square there to defend them. So gradually the forest changed. They had planted trees and gradually the forest became lofty and had many wildlife again. They had celebrated the rebirth of their forest and they were proud that they were the saviors of this forest. I have named the forest Jamila Bos, which in Swahili means forest of beauty. Thank you, sir. Very nice, Fari. Very nice. Thank you so much. Now we, uh, uh, Ananya, Ananya, can, can you narrate your story now? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Hello everyone, my name is Ananya and I am going to recite the story um, Warm Hug with Kabir Shaw. In a small house in a quiet village named Pahalgaon in Kashmir lived a little boy named Kabir. He was a gentle boy and all, was always helpful to everyone. He lived with his poor family in a mud house and his parents worked as shawl makers, Ali and Raja. His parents were very skilled and worked for long hours for all seven days in a week. They made shawls with every possible material, with like cotton, silk and wool and designed them in every possible color of thread. Ali was very fast at making the basic shawl and decided the fabric the shawl should be made of, depending upon the weather and cost. Raja was very good at designing and she started with deciding the colors and followed by deciding the patterns. Raja loved the Kashmiri paisley and flowers and made many shawls using these patterns in multiple color combinations. Her father's fa favorite color was pink as her daughter Dua loved pink. She, was al she always tried the pink shawl on Dua before selling them. Dua felt very happy when her mother tried the pink shawls on her and she always hoped that one day her mother would make the best pink shawl for her. Ali and Raja worked as a team. Ali first made the basic shawl and handed it to Raja to weave the border and design it and after that she handed it back to him to finish the shawl. They worked together for three to four hours to make the shawl. 
Ali and Ali and Jazia's shawls were very durable, warm, and very beautiful, which is why they were so popular. Jazia particularly became famous all around Kashmir for her fine work and patience and hard work. Once, once every few days, both Ali and Jazia would travel to the neighboring town to sell their shawls, to spend time with the parents. Kabir and his sister went to the small workshop and watched their parents work. Ali taught Kabir and Dua how to count the threads and basic mathematics while making the shawl, and Jazia spoke to the children about the color combinations, and she told what each pattern meant. She also taught them to do some easy designs. Kabir was a very fast learner and he always helped his father finish the end pieces of the shawl the day before his father was going to sell the shawls. As Dua was very small to weave the shawl, she would run and hand over the threads to everyone we met. While doing so, she had a good sense of colors and so she told her mother many different colors combinations while weaving. Both Kabir and Dua talked a lot and were full of stories about their friends in the school, the neighbors or their grandmother. These conversations filled the workshop with laughter and so everyone felt relaxed and worked with ease too. Kabir and Dua were not very were very responsible children. Not only they learned making the shawls, but also learned household chores. Together, they could cook a basic meal when they were hungry and alone. They also tidied the house and took care of their grandmother. One afternoon, when Kabir was playing outside his house with his friends, suddenly there was a strong and fierce wind which was blowing through. It seemed like a storm was approaching. All the friends ran to their homes. When Kabir ran and enters, entered the house, he saw that his old and wrinkled grandmother was shivering inside. Unfortunately, the same day, their parents had gone to the market to a nearby town to sell the shawl. Just then, a part of the roof also broke and pieces of the bro broken rooftop were lying on the floor. Kabir didn't know wh where to seek help from. There were no locks to make fire to. He was very confused and scared because his parents left Dua and her grandmother at his responsibility. Since he had nowhere else to go and no one took, took help from him, Kabir ran to the workshop. When he reached the workshop, he saw there, that there was some wool kept aside and so he ran home with the wool. It was very windy outside, but Kabir braved the wind and reached home. Once Kabir got the wool, Kabir calmed his sister and told her that both would, would try to make a shawl to comfort the grandmother. At first, Kabir showed Dua how to weave a couple of lines and then Dua kept on following her brother's instructions. Both of them made a part of the shawl and finally both joined it together to make some which grandmother huddled inside. It took them two hours to make that and the relief and the relief that grandmother got made Kabir and Dua very, feel very happy. After the wind stopped blowing, the parents came back from the market and heard everything of what had happened. Ali and Jazia were very proud and happy and had tears in their eyes. They hugged both Kabir and Dua. Ali and Jazia were now determined to make Kabir and Dua the best shawl makers in the whole of Kashmir. And now that Kabir and Dua had started learning to make shawls, their father taught them different styles of weaving. Kabir worked at the workshop for long hours after school and that's how he got better at it. Razia taught Dua and Kabir weaving a few patterns and after some time, Kabir mastered shawl making with beautiful patterns. Dua was still too little to learn all this, but her color matching skills were only getting better. Soon, they all depended on her to decide the colors of the shawl. Ali and Razia soon stopped working for their master and started a business of their own called Warm House. They worked even harder now, but they had Kabir and Dua to also help them. Warm House shawls became very popular, not only in the neighborhood town, but also in the whole of Kashmir. They worked very hard, but they led a comfortable life and lived happily. Thank you. Ananya, nice, but uh, you should have narrated without reading it. Yeah.
maybe next time okay yes we all read your story but we want you to narrate it for us right thanks thank you thank you so much and then we move to rishita sriya yes 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 i'm here that's fine the title of my story is zoya zara and zoya zara there were two sisters named zoya and zara they always played with each other without complaining much one day they both were playing in their garden and then their mother came over to them and said i and your dad are going to london to visit your grandma we'll come back after 13 days she needs to be taken to the hospital and then after a few hours of packing they left after two days they got a strange phone call the person on the phone whoever he or she was said hey it's me peter is it you zoya or is it zara then they both said both of us are here and we can hear you what do you want then the person on the phone whose name was peter said i have planned to raid a rich merchant's house the one nearest to the jungle Tomorrow night, eleven p.m. Let us all meet at the rich merchant's house. Congratulations <laughs> that you got your chance for your first trade. Bye. The sisters were very confused. They decided to go the next day. They thought of a plan, as they knew it was not them he wanted. They both sat together. and wrote down the details they knew about him they wrote down his name his phone number and all the other things he knew according to the plan the next night they went to the told place peter went to them and quickly said hey who are you you are not his own sir i want and you don't look like them either he grabbed the younger sister zoya at once and said promise me you won't tell anybody if you don't want me to hurt her but zara did not give up so easily and said all right you don't tell your phone number to everybody do you no said peter <laughs> in one short word then zara said Then here is your phone number six one three two eight four nine seven five zero. Now tell me what our phone number is, or I'll scream so loudly that all the people around shall come here. Peter said, "Your phone number is two eight three seven six." Two nine four zero one. Zara thought and said, "Correct." Now, can I have my sister back? Peter let go of Zoya and said, "Get ready for your first spread." Secretly, Zara said to Zoya, "Do something to get us out of here." Zara said, putting a fake excited face. Come on! It's so exciting. <coughs> Suddenly, Zoya shouted, "Ah, Zara! My stomach pain is back. Only much worse." Then Zara and Zoya went off home. Zara said, "God, I thought you really had a stomach ache," and asked. Will you now get on to bed? 
Zara began to read the Cinderella story to Zoya as her bedtime story. Zoya asked, "Why does it anyone else have the same size of their foot as Cinderella?" Same doubt said Zara. Now sleep. Good night. The next morning, they went to the telephone directory. They told the woman at the telephone directory the number Peter had told told them. The number of the Zoya and Zara he wanted was two eight three seven six two nine four zero one. The woman at the telephone directory said, "Ah, it belongs to two sisters named Zoya and Zara." They went to the rich merchant's house and told him everything. They told the rich merchant to call the police to his house by night. Then they went to the police station and told the police everything too. The police and the sisters tracked the thieves Zoya and Zara and put them in prison. At night, the police were ready at the merchant's house and caught. Peter and put him in prison. Then the sisters told Peter how he had got murdered. They said, "You wanted Zoya and Zara, who were also thieves like you. Their phone number, as you said, was two eight three seven six two nine four zero one. But our phone number, on the other hand, is two eight." Three seven nine two six four zero one. You got muddled up with a small six and nine, and you ended up getting caught. And they left. Thank you. Thank you, Rishita. Yeah, those of you who don't know, Rishita is my daughter. She narrated close to hundred stories good. Uh, at ten. And nine. Then we have four. Four. Yeah, close to a century, sir. Okay. Close to a century. Sir, uh, Vivian, sir, and uh, Sneha, madam. Uh, we have time. Would you like to sit? Uh, is it possible for you to stay till the end of the session? Maybe another hour. Uh, yeah. If if you have time, uh, we I will ask. I will uh, request you to address the kids at the end of the session. Otherwise, no, no, no. No, no. We listen to kids. It's the kids' program. We we'll just listen to them. Thank you, madam. So nice, like you know, listening to their imagination flying high. Yes, madam. Thank you. And uh, then we have uh, four to five story. Who is that uh, author? Four to five. Sachi Agrawal. Sachi, are you there? Oh, wonderful. Yes. Yes, sir. Can you? Uh, is it possible to show your video? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, please, please switch on the video and narrate your story. Thank you. I'm actually going to read it because I wasn't. It's a really long story, and I couldn't like take it in my mind. No, that's okay. You can refer, but don't read it out. Okay. I mean, we all read your story, so don't read it out. Just narrate. If you read something, you can refer. That's okay. 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 Yeah. Louise, the little fluffy cat, lived on a high hill in the lands of Aragon. There, down the hill, was a beautiful garden. Louise loved nature. Every day, he would go. He would go to take a stroll in the garden to spend some time with nature. He would sit near the little pond. In the garden, fondly chat with the butterflies and play with the grasshoppers, and hop around with the grasshoppers and play nut catch with his little friends. Louis's friends, Brick, Aggie, and Hudson, were actually from a small town in Aragon, Lego City. The their family from The family name was Mini Lego. 
and they had met at a camp near and and a camp and liked one's company they had played together danced and sung eaten together one spring morning went for his usual stroll he found his friend sitting beside a tent behind two little bushes he he thought he will surprise them louis sneaked into the camp boo he shouted then all began to laugh may i join you Le louis asked all began to laugh of course Aggie said they were happy to be together but started getting bored soon they wanted something exciting and fun to do but they couldn't think of anything they had done everything that they were used to doing they were aimlessly waiting around the pond and beginning to wonder if they should head home when when they found a sweet little boy who looked very lonely they had never seen him before what happened the four of them asked i am new here i don't know any friends i come and sit here my, by myself all day and have nothing to do don't you have anyone else in your family brick cast them well my mom and dad are really busy setting up the new cafe a cafe in aragon louis and the mini legos squealed together eee! haven't you heard there's a new cafe that my parents have just opened would you like to come in and have a look sure why not louise and agi cried in unison they always want to make new friends and what better than no to have a new friend as well as a place to go with them too exclaimed adson the little boy cheered with joy together they were one happy bunch they completed each other and found what they were probably missing separately so from four they became five wherever they went they sang a song on the way like five birdies in a nest five friends always make it best like five berries on a vine five friends always make it fine one two three four five there's now one more in the hive thank you beautiful sachi beautiful very good awesome thank you so much okay that we move to our next one shivani shivani are you there yes sir i'm there the forest fire yes shivani yes, please narrate the story good evening everyone i am shivani and i am going to narrate my story that is based on the forest fire that happened at at canberra in australia last year so the title of my story is the forest fire it was a hot morning it was very peaceful until the sun and the tree and and the clouds came shooting over the trees on the island the birds were chirping in search of food alex was sitting under a mulberry tree eating mulberries in his garden in australia alex was a 7 years old a sturdy boy he was very adventurous with brown, dark brown skin he had two dogs as his as his pets he was wondering if he was a detective and was researching a place with a lot of poisonous lichens suddenly he started craving for lychees as his parents were out and would return the next day because because of an urgent work he was given 100 dollars with him to spend on food 
he did not have leeches at his home. So now he had to wander in search of leeches if they were not available in the nearby show store. So he switched off the lights and closed all the doors and windows. He called his pets out of their dog houses and closed the main door. He walked to his nearby market and went to the fruit vendor. He asked, Uncle, do you have leeches? He replied, No, they have been finished as a customer wanted them for a party at his place. Now Alex thought where they would be available. Suddenly, an idea stroke in his mind. The idea was go to the forest and pluck some of the ripe leeches and enjoy them under a tree. He pulled his socks. As he reached the forest, there, were a, there was a sense of kinship with the flora of an ancient soul that stretched into everything that lived. His pet dogs and he himself were feeling so alive. The forest was humming with life all around them. <clears throat> the sun breaked through life all around them. The sun break through the cracks, lightening up the dirt path ahead of them, decorated with the outgrown roots, wild flowers and fallen leaves that crunched beneath his feet. Suddenly, he saw a ghastly orange grin tearing through the verdant woodland, unfettered flames devouring hungrily, licking and lapping at the coppice. It was a forest fire. Alex was certainly unaware of the forest fire. The boy and the dog started running in the opposite direction. The fire had started groaning hard. One of the dogs and Alex had gone a long way, but the younger dog was hurt because of a flame. But they ran and finally were out of the forest. The dog's leg was burned. Thankfully, Alex had a hundred dollars and the dog was treated by a doctor. Alex was very worried about, the, about his dog. Ignored the burn on his hand. He wondered that he was feeling so bad about his own pet dog burnt in his forest fires. Then what would be the condition of the other animals in the forest? By this thought, he went to the forest and helped the koalas and all the other animals that are being hurt by the forest fires. His parents were late because of some reason and returned after two days. After two days, when they returned, they asked him that how he and his pets were hurt. When they heard the whole story, they were very glad that they had such a brilliant child. Thank you. Shivan, are you from Australia? No, sir. I'm from India. Okay, okay, nice, nice. It's, yeah, Sorry, it's... sir, I could not uh, learn the story as I no, was. No, that's okay. That's okay. Unwell. That's okay. Even if you forget something, that's also that's absolutely fine with us. We just want you to narrate for us. That's all. Thank you so much, Shivani. So with that, I think we have done all the uh, stories in class three to five. We move to the next category, six, seven, and eight. We'll start with H. V. Mansa. Hi, Mansa. Mutigar, good evening. Good evening, Andy. Wish okay. Sam a very happy anniversary. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now continue, Mansa. Yes, um. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashri Mansa of then class eight, now class nine, and uh, today I'm going to narrate. The story titled A Lesson Outside the Class. Mansa, it's 9.50 and next period is computer. Shall we go ask uh, library sir the permission? Asked my dearest friend Prabhulika. I remembered that the next period was computer and I, I, we all wanted to go before the period started because we were all very excited to learn how to create a web page. So we all went to the library, sir. We pleaded as we do as children. And then finally, after a lot of time, library, sir, agreed. He gave us the permission to leave the library five minutes earlier. 
So before five minutes, we all rushed out of the library. For the ones who don't know, my school is in the shape of a horseshoe. So the library was on one side, whereas the computer lab was on the other side. So it almost took us five minutes to walk till the uh, from the library to the computer room. So we all went back to our class. We took our books. And if it was a normal computer period when we were not so interested to learn things, we would go along slowly chatting and talking to each other, knowing about uh, everything, seeing the surroundings and all. But today, as we were very excited, we all almost ran. We literally ran to the computer room. And when we reached it there, we were shocked. We were shocked to see that all the sixth class children's uh, shoes were lying on the floor wherever, wherever they wanted to put it. The right shoe was not matching the left shoe. It was all a mess. We all got very angry and we thought we, should, we must tell the students of sixth class to put their shoes in order. But then the bell rang, the students came out. But we were so excited to go in to learn the new new web page creation that we almost forgot to tell them. So the next uh, the next uh, week, when the same day came, we realized in the library that we did not tell them itself. So we thought, okay, okay today we'll go uh, earlier and tell them. But we didn't uh, think that library sir would let us go early again. So we uh, the class leaders went and started to beg sir then sir after a lot and lot of pleading sir agreed then we all rushed to the computer lab again just to tell them so then we were shocked we were shocked to see that all the shoes were neatly arranged in one corner then we then all as the bell rang all the sixth class students came quietly in a line and all of uh, all were looking at us, smiling, saying, hello, Didi, hi, Akka, and they went. We were all shocked and we looked at each other, saying, we thought we will tell them today, and they're already arranged. Then one of us realized that last class, when they came out, they would have realized that all of nine, eight class shoes were neatly kept in one corner, Whereas all the six class shoes were scattered on the ground. So that is why they learned that they have to do this way. So we all laughed. We, we all smiled at each other and we thought that today we, did, we didn't teach them. But we learned the, the real true meaning of the idiom. Actions. Actions speak louder than words. Thank you. Wonderful, Mansa. Very well narrated and very well written. Superb. And then we have Hanisha Chavla. Hanisha, are you there? The special marriage. Hello. I think Hanisha is not there and Yashwant is also not there. So we move to the next move to the next category. 9, 10, 11, and 12. Aparna, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Yes. Can you uh it? Yeah. Uh, so I'm a Parna Krishnan. I'm a budding artist and a senior studying at Indian School Algobra Maskaroman. And today I'll be narrating my story inside out. Squish, goop, dogger. I woke up enclosed in a red room. The first thing I felt was a foul smelling fluid rushing towards me. Was I in a gutter? I had no idea how I had gotten myself into such a sticky situation. I decided to get up and found out where I was. I dragged myself around the room and after a while, I spotted a hole on the soft red wall. It looked like a dark portal to nowhere. What if I got into more trouble? What if I found a way out? What lay beyond was questionable and could only be figured out by venturing into it myself. I struggled to hurdle through the hole. 
But finally, I had made it to the other side of the hole on the wall. As soon as I lay my feet on what seemed to me like the floor, a mob of alien-like creatures bounced towards me and lifted me. I was then juggled between two of these creatures. Leave me alone, I told them. They only put me down in front of their leader, or so I thought. So I got up and asked them, what do you want from me? Where am I? I was puzzled to see the mob looking right back at me as if I was speaking gibberish. Well, it was them who went jibber and jabber. The leader finally spoke up. I am King Bacteria III of the Glandular Kingdom. You are in the stomach of Sebastian the Hippopotamus. I don't fathom a person could be more astounded than I was at that moment. We are the glandular bacteria and we have lived here for 10 years, he said proudly. That was when it struck me. The last incident that I remember was visiting the San Diego Zoo with my family. I was dared by my bratty sister, Candice, to enter the shelter of the hippopotamus. Before I knew it, one of them gobbled me up. I remember laying on its slimy tongue and thumping its yellow and gritty teeth, hoping for him to let me out. When suddenly, a wave of water dragged me through a narrow, dark tunnel and slammed me onto the floor of the red room. I think I had hit my head very hard then. King Bacteria explained that the red room was the, with the soft walls was Sebastian's four stomach and that the fluid had been acid. How do I get out of here? I asked them helplessly. Why must we help you? What do we get in return? The king asked me. I will ask Sebastian to feed himself the greenest of leaves if you help me. I told them. The king and his clan proceeded to discuss in their bacteria language for a few moments. We sympathize for your condition. However, we cannot guarantee you a safe or pleasant journey. The king said. I felt a sudden shiver down my spine. But looking back, agreeing to that risk was, that, was the best decision that I had made. I was, looking, I was going to be accompanied by their strongest warrior. And as we bid farewell, he pushed me into a long, slimy, and convoluted tube. This was the way to Sebastian's nose. The warrior and I had to get past the thick mucus, and when we finally made it to the nostril, he used a feather to scratch the walls of the nostril. A true went Sebastian, and I was finally free. When the zookeeper came to assist me, I made him promise to feed Sebastian the greenest of leaves, else I would get back in his mouth. Thank you. Thank you, Apana. Thank you so much. Nice, nice story and nice, well narrated. Thank you. And then we have Luxia. I'm sorry, did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. you did, you did. Thank you so much. All right. Um, all of us here are all of us present here are well aware of the devastating impact war has with regards to the loss of life and property. But what people aren't very aware of is the psyche uh, psychological impact it plays on those who fight for our country. Survivor hopes to bring a light to that issue. Cinders ricochet of pale hands forged in treacherous flames. The heat was unbearable, but his hands faltered for not a second. It was the fear of the cold, an approach in stillness akin to that of death itself. He was a survivor, one whom life had tested quite redundantly. The outcome was always unary. A young boy emerging the victor through sacrifice and toil. The night passed with the brightest of rays shining through the worn down apartment. A bold heart told him of his days of yore, those of naivety and childlike innocence. Experience, however, was a stark reminder of this futility of thoughts. 
He made his way over to the broken down sink and with the leftover rations of food and half empty bottle of cranberry juice, he headed over to the kitchen table. He sat over its dilapidated state, eating his morning meal, pondering over the agenda for his day. On the sight of the bloody red pulp of his morning drink, he was transported to a place he'd grown all too familiar to visiting. He found himself in the Vardana, running away from what he dared not imagine. His superior was shot down. His comrades were long gone. The remains of his Kevlar hit the bruise on the center of his chest. Pain was an old friend. He soldiered on through the swirling mess of a battlefield. He was back in the apartment, thankful that he had not gone away for a long time. He headed over to the grocery store for refilling the now low supply of food and daily provisions. Every begrudging step he took across the inlaid marble floor of the market was a subtle reminder of the steps he had taken in his younger days. The smiles of people with their loved ones, a dreary reminder of what he had lost. She was his guiding light, a passionate young woman of about the same age who would stop at nothing to get conscripted into the army. He met her in his early days of training and the moment he set eyes on her, he knew that she would be the one to temper his soul. It was in those days when he was at his happiest, the time spent with her training, fighting over the last bits of blue cheese and arguments over the smallest of things. He cherished it all and in her, he found family. Of all of her quirks, he remembered one of them most clearly. She had a mild obsession with cranberry juice. Something about the tornadoing sight of a red fluid calmed her down. He planned to tie the knot with her after they would return from that fateful mission of the Vardana. The universe, as you would have it, had other plans. He made his way back to the apartment. It was growing dark now and it was time to burn once again. This was his curse, hopeful by day, shattered by night. A continued and confounding sense of domineering dread ruled over the rest of his days. The unified sense of struggle of millions across the world offered no alleviation either, for he had endured all that life had thrown at him at the cost of his joy. Thank you. Very nice story, Lakshya. Thank you so much. And then we have Shane. Yes, sir. Yes, Shane. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Shane Anton Lewis from Indian School Algubra, and I shall be narrating my story. A slightly built, olive skinned young man wearing a pink suit slowly paced towards the reception of one of the world's largest construction companies, Walton Constructions. He asked the receptionist rather confidently, good day, madam. I would like to speak with Mr. Walton for a couple of minutes. The receptionist frowned at such an unusual demand by a complete stranger to the office, but acceded to his request anyways. Sir, a young man wishes to meet you, should I? Yes, sir, immediately. Turning to the young man, she said, Mr. Walton is free now. Take the elevator to the sixth floor. You will find him there. Good luck. He thanked the receptionist, and in no time, he stood before a plump man in his mid-60s with no facial hair, sitting behind an oak table with a cupboard and beer counter in the corner. The young man immediately broke the silence. Sir, I'm Charlie Guys. I'm a non-entity compared to you, and I'm sure you have never heard of me. But I know you're successful, and I wish to be too. Please tell me how. Walton looked at Charlie and smiled. I have been waiting for a man like you for decades. Come back tomorrow. You will have your office, and you shall work for me. The next day, Charlie received his office as promised. It was a cleaned out closet 
with no windows and a dusty table in the center with a computer on top. You will receive about 100 mails every day. Check the spelling and grammar. And after you're done, clean the offices along with the janitors. Based on the work you do, you shall be paid. Walton said without a glimmer of gla animation on his face. The day passed by. Charlie's eyes were sore. His hands were, and clothes were covered in dust and sweat channeled its way through his face. Standing before him was Walton, who said, Mr. Guys, I'm Sir Walton Marlborough, founder and CEO of Walton Construction. My career began with starting my first company, Downtown Constructions. Things went slow and it, and it didn't work out. So I had to close it down after three years. After this initial setback, I founded yet another company, Rapid Construction, which like my previous endeavor, failed. My 20s and early 30s were spent dealing with these failures and taunts. But out of sheer pride and foolishness, I started my third company, Imperial Constructions, which surprisingly was a huge success. From renovating barns and fences, I began building town halls and multi-million dollar mansions. I felt on top of the world. I owned 40 acres of land, 11 luxury cars, and a $12 million mansion. Oh, time flies, doesn't it, Mr. Gax? Charlie, who was listening carefully, thanked Mr. Walton and left. After another day of backbreaking work, Charlie sat before Walton and the latter spoke. Imperial constructions made me very wealthy and happy. I had it all, but then tragedy struck. The real estate prices plummeted and my company fell in debt. In just a couple of months, years of mind numbing toil and dreams were just lost. I had lost everything. With no place to live, I went back to my father, broken and disheartened. My father, an optimistic and strong man, told me, success is not determined by a net worth or mansion. It's determined by how much you fall and get back up. With my father's backing, I bounced back into the market, founding Walton Constructions. Within three years, we had bases in 12 countries. And in 10 years, we were the largest construction company in the world. Remember one thing, guys. I made you work such menial tasks to make you humble and value the sweat from your brow. In order to face the vicissitudes of life, one must always be humble and strong. Flushed with confidence and strength, Charlie Guys thanked Mr. Walton and left. Thirteen years later, Charlie is sitting in an opulent office behind an oak table with a cupboard and beer counter in the corner. Upon one of the shelves of the cupboard lay the newspaper clipping. Guys Electronics, the leading producer of electronics. Then the phone rang. Guys answered. The receptionist spoke. Uh, I have a young man wishing to meet you. With a broad smile on his face, Guy said, send him in. Thank you. Nice. Nice. So all three of you are from the same institute? Aparna, Shane and... Uh... Yes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice, nice. Thank you so much. I think with that uh, story, we have come to all the narrations from the story writing competition. But we have one more young narrator among us. Mr. Ayan, who's been very patient. Ayan, you can start your story, Ayan, now. We're all, We're all Good evening, everybody. This is Ayan. Today, I brought the story of a hunter and a greedy little pigeon. They were innumerable evergreen trees in a big forest. Many pigeons have built their nests in these trees. The sweet chirping of the pigeons would fill the air every morning and evening. One fine morning, a hunter came to the forest he scattered some grains, spread his net over them, and hid behind a tree, and waited 
for some pigeons to caught in his net. After a while, some pigeons flew down and started pecking at the grains. Before they could realize, they were trapped in the hunter's net. The hunter came out from his hiding place, took the net along the trapped pigeons. The following day, too, the hunter came to the forest and trapped some more pigeons in his net. This continued for many days. One day, all the pigeons in the forest held a meeting to discuss about the merits of the hunter. To discuss about the merits of the hunter and to save themselves from his net. After a long deliberation, all the pigeons decided to, as soon as when the hunter enters the forest, they will start, they would start singing loudly. That would warn all the pigeons in the forest. That would prevent the hunter from spreading his net. The next day, when the hunter entered the forest, all the pigeons started singing loudly. Beware, the hunter is here. He scatters grains, spreads his net. He lures you. But beware, don't be lured, don't be trapped. When the hunter heard the pigeons singing the song, Oh, today all the pigeons were, are warned about my arrival. Alas, today I would go empty-handed, thought the hunter. But the hunter would not give up easily. He scattered grains, spread his nets over them, and hid behind a tree. But that day, the hunter could not catch a single pigeon in his net. After a few days, the hunter came back to the forest. He scattered some grains, spread his net over them, and hid behind a tree. But the pigeons saw him and started singing loudly. Beware, the hunter is here. He scatters grains, spreads his net over them. But he lures you. But beware, don't be lured, don't be trapped. One, but one greedy little pigeon was tempted to feed itself on the grains. So he flew down and started pecking on the grains. The hunter came out, took the net along with the greedy little pigeon and left the forest. But the greedy little pigeon was still singing. Beware, the hunter is here. He scatters grains, spreads his net. He lures you. But beware, don't be lured, don't be trapped. The moral of the story is never be greedy. Thank you. Nice, Ayan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good, good. Now, can may, I, may I request everyone to switch on their uh, video? I'll just take a photo of all our participants. This is the three I left. Is that any join? We read, can you switch on your video? Yeah, are, we, are we supposed to be part of this? <laughs> yeah, why don't we go out, ma'am? No, 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 no. Let the kids be there. No, no, no. Please, sir. Please, sir. Please stay. Yeah, that's all. That's all. This photo is done. Thank you.
and uh, yes uh, so kids we have uh, uh, raimol sneha madam and we have chandrashekar garu here there is these two are two judges out of four so i would like uh, them to address you now madam can you please share your experience and any guidance you have there is no addressing here my god the way they are speaking i am humble <laughs> i thought i'll give a speech and all that but now i have understood there is no need for all that frankly speaking it's it has been a delight you know the way they were waiting for their turn right from there to speaking isn't it chandrashekar sir it's like yeah 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 it's a like no actually to be frank no right now another session is going on in my house my elder daughter who's here she is attending the toastmasters she is part oh. of the toastmasters It's like just, like no, mother she, like mother like daughter. No, you know, I am going here. Just so she has completed and has come there. Had some power of one and all India some meeting. I'll tell you, she doesn't enjoy working in Deloitte, but she enjoys being part of the Toastmasters. <laughs> you can see the energy going up in her the day that is Toastmasters meeting. They dance, they speak, table topic. You know, it's wonderful. I have attended the sessions; it's so well conducted, and exactly the same I see there. Same stories, you know. They have table topics like you know, extempore speaking. Uh, what is it? Fresh uh, first time speech is called as uh, I forgot. And I mean, she takes so much of effort to make the best, and you know, they have. Even the evaluators are evaluated. Chandra Shekhar sir will be knowing, no? Yeah, yeah. They have evaluators yeah. who will evaluate, and their evaluation is evaluated. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful thing, and then you know, I'm so happy that you know this has got taken its seed from NSTL campus because yeah, of Surya. Right. That is the biggest thing, and thanks to COVID, it's going to go national and international. And so, like I saw somebody from Oman. Yeah. Yes, right? three kids, three kids. Three kids. Up. So anyway, it's going to go international. So. I mean, I don't think I have to make any suggestions. The seniors are training the juniors. You know the way. Actually, what I I would like to say is like you know, actually, uh, children, when you do this, you are learning in many ways. Like you are learning to write, you are creating your own characters, and then you are speaking. Your imagination is growing. When I see these, uh, you know, recently in YouTube, you can see this some. Company has started a coding this thing. No, you must have all seen when you watch YouTube. I was just thinking, my God, small children are being taught to learn coding when they are supposed to do these kind of activities. I wanted to give a put a case against a company who is doing that advertisement of you know choosing children to be learning coding and people like Farah Khan, all celebrities are promoting it. I mean, can you imagine these sort of things happening? Code. I'm not speaking against science or technology. I would say the right combination of art, science, culture, everything is needed in a child. Like we always say, you know, when we go to Andhra University, we have science campus in one corner and social science campus in another corner. They never meet. You can either be part of science or you can either be part of arts. You don't. You're never given a chance to have a combination. So through Surya Angle, you are actually making the right beginning. I will say, and you know, like uh, today, you know, uh, a friend of Sharon, in fact, she he has uh, he is a trained allopathy, you not know, Ayurveda doctor, and he has left his Ayurveda learning to become a writer. So I keep promoting him because I have the selfish motive of making him a writer. So today morning, children, I am telling, he has sent me a WhatsApp message writing for all the writers out there. it may be your private burden to suffer the anxieties of writing but it is also your unique privilege to be the first in line to enjoy what you have created yeah you no know, though i don't know whether you understand the pain of writing creating character for them it must be something natural but like if we sit and try to make characters and make them evolve we find it you know i always think how film directors and all make movies you see it on the screen but on their first page there is nothing you know from their characters are developed they evolve so what goes through their mind when they play through the character i always want to know so i enjoyed reading this his name is mahesh i sent me this message you know so whatever i don't know uh, actually so yeah one day you can make them say what they feel when they write all this is it enjoyment is it like tension you know till the right word comes 
because i've heard arundhati roy once asked you know what is the most happiest moment in your life arundhati roy is a writer so she said when i go out for a walk and come back and when i find the right word which i wanted in a particular line when i get it that's the most happiest moment i don't know whether children will be able to relate to what i'm saying but you know i enjoy seeing this thank you so much for making me a part of it no and, matter uh, it's nice it's a very we are very happy to have you madam we need somebody like you to guide us maybe you can ask the kids or he is he is much much senior my god i appreciate the way he speaks and you know he is the cultural what you call uh, the person who leads the cultural activities of nsdl i am no way near by my god thank you so much madam maybe i on behalf of you i last this question to the kids here so what do you one second madam this is better <clears throat> like uh, why do you write what do you get when you write madam what emotion do they feel probably the seniors will be able to tell it no madam kids the juniors are out here i have a thought to let what do you feel when you write yes What is it? I want to write a story by Surya Sir. How do you, is it? Is it you know? Uh, how do you start? Do you write? Ma'am, there is a mix of feelings, uh, hmm. confusion of even in this contest. This contest, the invitation came out of the blue. Hmm. One day, it was a normal day, but suddenly my class teacher had uploaded a picture about the same. contest so there were a mix of feelings you know i have created stories and poems by finding the right word making a story and most of all writing a story even if you are writing five lines you look at it and you will probably say i have done so much but it is actually a really small you have to think it as a really small for me i had a i had a really big laziness it was my mother who motivated me and pushed me beyond what i could reach but are you happy now yes that's called as a pain you know you call it as a labor pain till you get the yes. idea and put it into a paper and then add whatever and give all the beauty and finally when you say it people will feel you know it's nothing but you know what you go through so we wanted to know what yes. you feel when you write good then anything I else i to make my writing see what i have gone through to get the right word and all i try to make my writing farid we would like to hear uh, see your poems and stories on sam you can upload write your stories and poems on sam we would love to read all of them. yes uh, i'm currently writing a series uh, about ninjas kung fu series wow oh. it is called bow and the bow stick bow oh. and the bow star love to read please upload whenever it is ready yes sir thank you for it thank you so much sir in my writing i want i do is i at least try to add a pint of reality what i do is i take a real culture community or something i take it it is like a clay and what i do is i mold it into a my god very good for it yes, my yes, favorite yes. storyteller amin haq he says truth well told is a good story truth well told is a good story so that's what i think you are doing truth well told good good keep on going go on and please let us know whenever you are done with the story so we can read and maybe join the community madam sorry no make them join i mean they let the you know ask them to make their friends join the so them won't even be knowing these kind of activities are going on ma'am also this book is like a bit of collaboration with my best friend because we all are uh, fans of kung fu and he is a fan of the ninja turtle series oh so we used to draw images of weapons we i we used to talk about the uh, different tactics 
of the warfare <laughs> we were very much interested in warfare. that we also made a comic but then we figured out that it was actually going to be a rip off because someone had done it before rip off ah. <laughs> wonderful thank right. you sir i am actually trying to finish the uh, my book and trying to end it in a unexpected unexpected place because that would make my readers look forward to the second book and i am trying to get it published it's like bahubali one and so the people waited for bahubali two huh? Good, yes, good, sir. very good, good idea, good thought, good thought. Please continue. Yes. So, uh, I came across a, you know, uh, I don't know, you must be knowing. There's a haiku poetry of Japan. It's just yeah. three line, three line yeah. poetry. It's wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, so, I mean, if you are getting stuck with writing long stories and all, no, probably you can. It does. It need not make any, you know, uh, sense too much. But you can write three lines and make it a haiku poetry. But I still, enjoy. they convey a serious message. They just uh, make. Even though they don't mean anything, yeah. If they translated yes, in English, if yes, they uh, if we read it, they just make a pleasant and we can just pictureize an image in our mind. Ah. I have read it, sir. Haiku. Yes, haiku. Yeah. Haiku. I have not read it. Thank you, yeah. madam. Thank you, Parid. It's very nice, you no, know, to start off. They don't have to think too much. It's just the idea what they have put it in lines and then. Wonderful that you already know about it. My God! My God! I I need to be really careful when I speak. <laughs> how, how old is Farid? Farid? So I'm ten and a half years old. You are in fifth or sixth now? I'm in fifth. Nice, good, good to hear. We would like to have you again for our next session. All of you, not Thank only you, Farid. Sir. Where are the others? No one else told what they feel when they write. Just a minute. Yeah. I'll take a call, Surya. One minute. I'm back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Ananya, Sriman, sir. Would you like to say something? Where? What do you get? Why do you write? Anything you can say. Vishu, do you write stories? No. No, madam. Maybe I next. Vishu, could you repeat? I just prepared. No, no. Uh, Vishu is too young, madam. So, like he is in second standard. I don't think he started writing. Vishu, do you write stories? Do you think of stories in your mind? No. Okay. You you will start maybe maybe in an year or. Two. Auntie at this age can't do it. Okay. Yes, Mansa, would you like to say something? Ah. Uh... I think uh, from, uh, I think first hand, uh, I started to speak with uh, dad's help, and so slowly I after fifth and sixth and island teacher started to make us write stories. So that time I got more uh, interested uh, to write and tell my own stories to figure out a way that you write your own story, narrate it in your own feeling. and most of my stories are generally uh, the things that happen in my life around me uh, or uh, some stories are inspired uh, from the stories told by my dad so like that i just keep uh, writing that is close to my heart so that i will remember it forever and uh, thanks for the opportunity surya uncle and uh, thanks to the judges especially yeah you you can thank the judges because they have made you the winner <laughs> but you're so very nice. Now you see my elder daughter is here. She'll speak about Toastmasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hi, Zara. Hi, hi. Hello. Why Toastmasters? Hello, everyone. I told about Toastmasters. Oh, okay. Finally, okay. something is going on. Good evening, everyone. So nice to see you all. Good evening, Mole. Hello. Am I right? Am I right in saying that? Okay. Yes, you are right in saying, Mole. I got it right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I just walked in a little earlier and was hearing all these stories. Wonderful. I wish I know the others would agree with me even more, but I personally wish I could, you know, go back in time and give these stories again. So me too. Me too. Yeah. Glad to hear that. So I, I'm sorry, myself, Surya. 
Hi, Surya. Hi, and your good name? I am Sharon. Sharon. Uh, yes. Sharon, maybe uh, maybe next week or sometime when you have time. Every Sunday you have Toastmaster? Every Saturday. Saturday. Every Saturday. Saturday. So maybe Sunday you can join and maybe you narrate a story for our kids and for, for us also, for the elder person. Oh, They'll sure. learn a thing or two from, from you. Yes, I may not know stories that are as good as these guys do. I might no, be. No, that's okay. So any, anything can be narrated. <laughs> But sure, I'd love to do that. Thank you for yeah. the opportunity. I, I will drop by next time onwards. But I don't want to break off in between. I'd like you guys to continue. Thank you so much for having me. Chan yeah, Singh, you and I need to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, two minutes of your time. I want you, well, you just introduce the kids to the Toastmasters thing. Oh, all right, sure. Yeah, do so, that. Kids yes. can listen, please. Hmm. All right. So Toastmasters is an international organization which works on building confident speakers and confident leaders. And that's the tagline. But let me make it a little simpler for you. Right? And this is something that I used to argue with my mother when I was a kid. She used to come and try to wake me up in the morning. She's here. Shush, you don't be here when I'm telling this. <laughs> she used to come and wake me up in the morning. She used to say, Sharon. You're so lazy. Get up. You're wasting time. This is this just doesn't work. And I, the moment she says that, until then, if my blanket is like this, the moment my mom says that, I'll pull it further. Because I become adamant. That, mm -hmm. you know, she's shouting at me. I'm not going to let go of the blanket. I'm going to sleep further in. She would say it a couple of more times at the blanket, I'll pull even more. And then finally, after I wake up, brush my teeth, have my glass of milk, <laughs> it's just appeared out of nowhere. I used to finally go and tell my mom that, Amma, the purpose of what you're trying to do is for me to wake up, you know, brush my teeth, go study or get ready for school. That's the purpose. Correct. That's what you want me to do. Would it not help if you just were kinder, you were sweeter in saying, Sharon, get up. You have so much to accomplish from this day. Such a wonderful kid, just saying, not that she ever said that to me. Such a wonderful kid. Um, you know, if she's told me in a way that I was happy to hear, I would have been a yes, this is my day, I'm going to seize it, I'm going to be a superwoman, I'm going to run. But because she used to tell me, Hope oh, guys, you're always sleeping, I used to be like, Nope, purpose lost. So that's a very small story, I know, but what I meant to say is sometimes it does matter what we say, it does matter, that always matters, but how you say it also counts. Right. So if uh, our dear Surya sir did not have a smile on his face when he was narrating these stories to you or taking you through the session, probably you would not have found it as interesting. Right. It's because he's smiling always that you are liking to listen to him or Chandrasekhar uncle always giving these expressions that you're like, ah, this is such a fun place to be in. And I hope <laughs> my mom is also smiling. Probably that is why you're staying. So Toastmasters st speaks about different aspects of you know, how you don't say um uh, too much, how you're very clear in what you're saying and well, to be amazing storytellers like you guys are. That's the gist of it. Sharon, when you're you. talking about your Thank mother you. waking up, waking you up in the morning, uh -huh. there are two persons in my at, my, at this place. One is very happy and another is very sad. Okay. Okay. And you know who is sad? The mother is sad and the daughter is happy. Yes. <laughs> That's why I sent my mother also away. She's like, this is not for you. This is for me and my group, my gang who are listening to me on this call. This is for us. This is not for you, Amma. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> the story is the same at most houses, if not all houses. See, so now we have to change the strategy. You have to tell parents, Ki, you tell me, Pyar se, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll do everything. Meet me after six years. <laughs> and speak the same. And speak the same. Why six I'll years? But I'm not going to bring that conversation here. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about the time duration later. later. But sometime, sometime in the future, let me see my child whether you'll speak the same way, or you'll see at that point. The table. At that point, what's going to happen is see Amrita or probably Hamida or Manasa. They'll come and tell me, see Sharon, this is not how you're supposed to do it. They'll come and teach me this That's lesson. Enough. And yeah, then I'll be very really happy that someone was listening to me. But good, I will good, make good, good. Sharon, because there are people, at least fathers like me, somewhere who try to wake them with the kids of Yaad say. 
<laughs> I can see a tap. Surya, tap. Surya was getting a pat on the back. If I could <laughs> see it properly. <laughs> yes, that's what I do. That's why my daughter always asks me to wake her up, not her mother. The but, pat, the pat is just a starter, friend. After the starter, the main course will start, and uh, let me see if you will keep laughing even then. It's raining very much. Now I'm worried. After this, there are going to be parents coming behind me and saying that, "Abhi bache hume pada rahe ki kaise unhi ko thala hai." No, 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 no. We we need we need people who think differently. We need people who are strong enough and brave enough to put forth their words. Because storytelling and story writing is all about. There are words all around you, kids. It's it's like a rock. All the words in the vocabulary are there around you. Then you are wordsmiths, sculptors. You have an idea in your mind, and you start chipping away and leave only those words that will give form to your idea. That's all storytelling is about. Story writing is about. Speaking is about. You don't have to use all the millions of words in vocabulary to put forth your word. You do away like a sculptor. You chip away little blocks here, little blocks there, everywhere, and then you got a beautiful sculpture, which is an expression of your inner personality, inner feelings. And that's that's how. That's why wordsmiths wordsmiths are those that create such wonderful pieces of verbal or written art. so it's been a pleasure a really a wonderful pleasure reading all the stories of the kids and listening to them over the past 4 years uh i have i've been enriched by all the kids the way they take things the way they react the young philosopher who is the latest entrant to ayan so much i learn from him his, his stories are all going above the head sometimes you know at his age and the way farid at 10.5 if he is like that i am uh, more than five times your age uh, farid and um, i don't know what you will be by the time i wish you have a nobel prize in literature by that age i sincerely you, wish sir. wish that I for you i was a screenplay writer so, okay okay good good Thank you, sir. good good and it was it was a wonderful pleasure interacting with all the kids and my uh second daughter uh sharon so uh, yeah love you kid so fantastic interacting yeah uh, interacting with you all thank I you for the opportunity surya pardon not for your ears it's not for your ears i don't know what she said about me no the problem is the toastmaster quality she has got from her chan we get it every day in our office so fine <laughs> dr manu <laughs> and that it's it's but natural she is hiding behind you <laughs> but natural that the part of manu speaks through her we are used to it at office so thank you thank you sneha ma'am it's been wonderful thank you thank you surya garu that's it from me love you that's all children meet you again yeah sure sure thank you all thank you all bye sharan bye 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 bye, bye. Thank bye you. bye everybody god bless bye sir